Good day, ladies and gents. Let me ask you a somehow philosophical question. When was the last time you played a game that you truly enjoyed despite the shortcomings it had? Was it today? Yesterday? Last week? Last month? Or was it years ago? This game is one of the few games that gave me a lasting impression, despite its flaws, because of how unique this game is compared to already existing ones in the market. I'm talking about Tappen. No, not this Tappen. This Tappen. And it's a card game that exists as a fan service to all Capcom enthusiasts. Well, at least that's the initial intention of the game. Developed by Gung Ho Online Entertainment and published by Capcom, Tappen was first released in July 2019 and was initially dubbed as Project Battle during the game's early developmental stages. The game is basically an all-star crossover bonanza of different Capcom IPs mashed together into a real-time card game. Yes, I said that correctly, a real-time card game. And that is something I have never even realized is remotely possible. Another question though, how do you exactly play this game? In Tappen, you and your opponent play cards against each other as a way to take action and deal damage to the opposing side. The aim is to reduce your enemy hero's life to zero using the array of cards you have in your arsenal. You can do so by summoning units on your side or use actions that can turn the tide of battle in your favor, which there are several. Additionally, you can also win by having the higher HP than your opponent after 5 minutes. So you can say, you can either win by playing your cards right or outsmart your foe through a sheer battle of attrition. The choice is yours. The game takes place in a 3x3 field, kind of like Duel Links in some way, where you can only summon 3 units at a time. This is pretty nice as this makes combat simplified in some way and makes the combat pacing as dynamic as possible. Also, the real-time nature of the attack meter of each unit really reminds me of a fighting game where you can make certain reactions when responding to specific inputs that your opponent throws at you. In short, Tepin is kind of like a fighting game disguised as a card game, which is a unique concept in itself. And for someone who always likes ideas that breaks the conventional wisdom of certain genres of gaming, I am all up for it. Cards in this game have four different attributes, each of them reflecting a specific playstyle. Red focuses on offense and inflicting direct damage, green on defense and healing, purple on play disruption and movement restriction, and black on sacrificing units or recycling resources in exchange for powerful plays. I have to be honest, it kinda reminds me of Shadowverse in a way, on which some of the cards also have certain attributes and properties that are also found in Tepin. A nice touch, albeit unoriginal in Tepin's case. As for the story? Hmm, there really isn't that much to write home about and it's pretty forgettable. There are 16 Capcom characters that are looking for their own truth in a place called the Land of Illusion. Uh, and while the concept is pretty promising, the game hasn't expounded much on this since and most of the game's lore are now just integrated in the cards and card packs that are being introduced in the game. Speaking of cards, a new pack is being introduced every two months, which incentivizes players to further improve their decks and discover newer strategies. And that is one of Tappen's greatest strengths. The game offers a lot of avenues for experimentation, since most cards in the game aren't entirely restricted to a specific playstyle, which can allow you to mill different colored cards for some surprisingly good combinations, provided that you have enough knowledge on how each card works. The game is also pretty free to play friendly, as you have the avenue to reap cards that you don't need in order for you to craft cards that you'll definitely want for your card collections, which eliminates the pay to win aspects of the game since card knowledge and extensive deck building know-how is crucial if you want to rank high. You can buy premium currency in this game being jewels, but they're just there to hasten your card collection progress. Tappen offers a variety of multiplayer and single player challenges all of which are there to test their skills with the game and help you understand the fundamentals of it. Plus, you get some free stuff by finishing certain milestones, which is always nice. Speaking of free stuff, tap and shower you with tons of card pack tickets frequently, which you need to draw in from existing sets you want to collect cards from. A similar system can also be seen in Shadowverse, where certain tickets can only be used on certain card packs. In fact, this game really does feel like a direct competitor to Shadowverse, with the way they handle deck balancing, to the story progression, and even to the basic elements that establishes the core gameplay of itself. And I all say this to Tepin's benefit, as this can really make you feel like you're in a familiar place, with the exception of Saigaze being replaced by the Capcom brand. But enough talk about IP jumbling. I did recall that there are four e elements. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. elements in this game. However, there are four heroes that all
also represents each of their color elements, all of which offer more unique gameplay styles that will surely pump up your creativity in some way, shape, or form through the form of hero arts. All hero arts are unique and can function differently depending on the colors that it represents. Whether you want to play as Ryu to deal massive amounts of direct damage to your enemies, or be like Alba Wesker and achieve complete global saturation with your army of the undead, the possibilities of having the right strategy at the right place and time can make the actual difference between falling behind and rising to the apex of success. And that is what makes Teppin fun. Honestly, my favorite heroes in the game are the Monster Hunter characters, specifically Rathalos and Nargigante, which are all about solid firepower. But the question is, is there anything that this game falls short from? Well, their marketing is basically nil, meaning that the game gains nearly zero traction from a lot of indiv indiv individuals, the press included. Sure, it had some YouTube ads that promotes the game in some way, as well as card pack release trailers, and even stream tournaments, but other than that, Tepet's marketing, or the lack thereof, is basically catered to a specific audience, which doesn't help if you want the game to be so well known. Keep in mind that this is a Capcom brand. There are a lot of IPs that are involved in this. You really have to step up your marketing game if you want your game to even stand a chance. And, and I have to be honest, I am surprised that this game has already lasted for three years, however. Something that another game that I somehow enjoyed Tales of Luminaria has failed to achieve. And TOL is not even a card game by any means. It's made by Bandai Namco, the same ones who developed the critically acclaimed Tales of Arise. And that is saying something, to be honest. The game also has tons of quality of life features that improves your experience even further, such as a Japanese dub, choosing the background music for your lobby, being able to purchase skins for your heroes, and even choosing the theme you want to hear during battles. Nice stuff. So what are my overall thoughts about Teppin? If you are already tired with a plethora of card games that offers the already tried and true formula, and if you're looking for something unique while providing you with some familiar faces to tinker around, then this game is certainly for you. Otherwise, well, there's always other card games out there. <coughs> if you do fancy them yourself, <coughs> Duel Links. <coughs> <coughs> Well, that's all I can say about this fantastic game for now. And while Teppen is a great game in itself, it's kind of badly hindered with the marketing, which is almost non-existent. If you'd like to see some similar content in the future, please don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. See you ladies and gents next time. Bye!